Now there's another kind of mountain bolt, which you've also seen in the unit on plate tectonics, which is not caused by collision. And that is the Andes, the Andes on the west coast of South America. There the mountain belt is dominantly formed by the compression of a subducting plate beneath the edge of the continent, but also the vertical rise of molten liquid, molten rock, produced by the partial melting of the solid plate as it descends beneath the edge of South America. Let's um, do some vertical movement on the squeeze box this time and see what kind of effect that has. There the strata being domed upward. Imagine the liquid from a subducting plate rising and forcing the strata upward and of course bursting through to the surface and producing volcanoes. And there you have the Andes. So the Andes show uh, more vertical movement than the kind of mountain bolt that we described as a collision mountain bolt. So we've got two kinds of collision mountain bolts and also what we could call, if you like, uh, a dominantly thermal mountain bolt. That is a mountain bolt in which a lot of the movement, the upward movement, is produced by rising molten igneous rock. Now, in all of the cases that we've discussed, the mountain bolt has been produced at the margin of a plate. And when we look at ancient mountain bolts, the good question to ask oneself is, well, where are the margins that those mountain bolts grew on, so to speak? Well, let's have a look at some mountain bolts, some ancient mountain bolts, and see where the edge of the plates might be. The Appalachians lie in this position. Here is North America. Here is Greenland. Here is Europe. And here are the southern continents of Gondwana land. And the whole makes the supercontinent that you know already, Pangaea. So in fact, in the reconstructed Pangaea, the Appalachian Mountains lie inland, so to speak. There's no obvious margin even in Pangaea. But if we remove this part, we remove this part, and then we also remove this, and we imagine ocean in here, and in here, and in here, and we imagine the events we've just described, the coming together of continents by the consumption of ocean plate, then this is the situation which created the Appalachians. Western Europe moving up toward North America and Greenland about 370 million years ago, producing a collision mountain belt. A second event, the movement upward of the southern continents, Africa in particular, about 280 million years ago, producing another collision on the North American continent, this time affecting particularly the southern part of the Appalachian Mountains. And then finally, the Ural Mountains, which also seem to lie without being at an edge of an obvious plate, they were produced by the coming together of Asia and Western Europe. So although the mountains in Pangaea and the ancient mountain belts we see today don't seem to be obviously related to the edges of plates, in fact, if we take apart the plates along the line of the ancient mountain belts, we can see very clearly how the ancient mountain belts were, in fact, related to the edges of plates. Now, the Appalachians are of particular interest to, it, to us. We'll be looking at the Appalachians in detail in the next part of this unit, in the second part. So let's look at the, um, the northern Appalachians in Newfoundland and Nova Scotia in detail. Let me take these away first. And replace them with 
the detailed parts of Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, and explain each of these pieces of that area of the Appalachians. That's how it looks today. Here is Newfoundland. Here is then the mainland, the Gulf of St. Lawrence, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island. Now, as a result of the two collisions which produced the Appalachian Mountains, and then the splitting of Partigan to produce the present Atlantic, we have in the Maritimes the following geological jigsaw, if you like. This part of Nova Scotia is in fact a fragment of Africa that was left behind on the North American continent when the new split producing the present Atlantic took place. This part, which includes the southern part of Newfoundland, Prince Edward Island, part of New Brunswick, that is continental crust and seems to have been perhaps an island rather like Madagascar, although a very big one, that lay close to the shore of the North American continent and was also rammed up against the continent during the two collisions of Western Europe with North America and Africa with North America. And then, forming the central part of Newfoundland, and also forming part of the St. Lawrence estuary area, are two wedges of what is left of the intervening ocean, the ocean that was the Atlantic 280 million years ago. And finally, on the north, we have the edge of the North American continent. So during the two collisions which produced the Appalachian mountain bolt, these fragments were welded onto the edge of the continent. An ocean destroyed, two fragments left. The major one in the central part of Newfoundland. A piece of continent that lay on the opposite side of that ocean forming the southwest part of Newfoundland. And finally, a piece of Africa, which forms the most coastal part of the complex of the Appalachians in the Maritimes. So remember that composite picture of Newfoundland while you look at the second part of this unit. L'importante è la reputazione. Primo, 